Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a bit of a different topic and one that means a lot to me. Um, I just learned of the passing of someone I've watched heavily in the past. His name is Desmond Amofa. He goes by Etika. I used to watch his YouTube channel, or both of us used to watch his YouTube channel a lot in the past. And I have the story of um, how he committed suicide. So I'm gonna get into that. All right, so here's a quick summary of what happened. Um, almost a week after popular streamer Etika, whose real name is Daniel Desmond Amofa, uploaded a video to YouTube entitled I'm Sorry, in which he's walking outside in New York and saying what sounds like to many fans a final goodbye. The New York Police Department confirmed that they recovered his body from the East River, a half mile from the Manhattan Bridge, where Etika was seen walking towards in his final video. He was 29 years old. Um, previously, they said he put his belongings down a couple of days ago, his uh, gaming console, his wallet, a couple of things. Um, a bit of a history, he's had a long history of mental health issues. Eight months ago, he was taken into custody in his Brooklyn apartment by the NYPD and committed to a psych ward. Um, in his eight minute goodbye video, he says he's sorry for leaving a 10 stained legacy. He hopes that his story helps to make YouTube a better place in the future where people know boundaries and limits and how far things should go. You know I wasn't suicidal before, I really wasn't. But one thing I didn't realize was that the walls were closing around me so fast. I really had no intention of killing myself, but I'd always push it too far. I guess I'm mentally ill. Um, also, I would like to mention that when I watched him um, pretty closely back in the past, he was a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Like, he in his videos was like, if anything was to happen, like, my mom would be so sad. Like. And it also just goes to show you how much people can change. You might be watching the video right now. You might think you're perfectly, um, you know, with it. You're not going to commit suicide at all, but things change. You right now watching the video might be thinking that suicide is something you'll never do, but things change. You can be a different person in three years in a different situation and be, you know, led down this path. So it's interesting how... Um, he was totally against this back then. Right, and I do want to also mention why we are making this video, because I want to highlight something that I find really negative is within hours of this posting, we at least are going to wait a day, we're going to post this, we're not going to monetize it. It's just something that we're, we're affected by. The reason we're making this video is I feel like there's a conversation to be had here that is important. Like he said um, that he wishes YouTube would be a better place. I think we want to make this video and be involved in that experience. But some things that kind of did rub me the wrong way is how fast people are getting certain videos up. Like his friends and some people that are, are making videos uh, are great, but there are Places like, uh, I think, E! on YouTube, they have already been bombarded with dislikes and their dislike bar is down because it's just people trying to make a quick monetized buck off of a tragedy like this. And I think that's one of the reasons we want to get on here and discuss things so we can make YouTube a better place. And this person did mean a lot to us. I mean, when we did watch him, uh, I couldn't even recognize him now that Shaman mentioned. He's entirely different, but when, I, when we did used to watch him, he was a really, really great hyped energy guy that was really, really uh, positive energy. And um, yeah, it's just I, unfortunate. Yeah, I don't have many subscriptions on YouTube, mm -hmm. and he was one of them. And so this was extremely shocking this morning when I heard the news. Like, mm -hmm. I was literally, like, my mouth was open. I'm like, really? Yeah. Um, and there is a greater discussion to be had here, and we're going to get into that in a second. So one of the first things we wanted to get into is a little bit of talk about the idea and the issue that we're having in our society as a whole with suicide and how it is a solution to some people um, rather than dealing it in a more positive and more productive way. Uh, it's kind of a, an escape. It's a way that people can use alcohol, you can use drugs to escape your problems. Suicide is the ultimate escape of your problems. Uh, but there are consequences to what you leave behind and you could have led a much more uh, fulfilling and uh, positive life rather than just kind of throwing it away because of something that is possibly temporal. I know a lot of people have different issues uh, for carrying out suicide. I mean, there is even, if you want to get down to the complex regions like complex regional pain syndrome where people are in constant pain all the time and they take their own life. Like there are different levels to this, but if you're somebody with an issue, a social issue, an issue with a spouse, an issue with, you know, X, Y, or Z that has a problem, there's better ways and systems set up to help you. 
And I do want to mention that the systems are not perfect. I know a lot of the stuff we're reading now coming out is, you know, where was the doctors? Where was the hospitals? Where was the mental health system? Um, and he was admitted in right. a psych ward right. uh, for having suicidal um, ideation. And that's right. basically like thoughts about suicide. Right. Um, but the, the issue with that is you can't keep someone, as um, physicians, you can't just decide to keep someone in a hospital uh, or somewhere forever. You can't just lock them in if they're having suicidal thoughts. Right. If they don't have a plan and they're not actively seeking to kill themselves, you have to let them go as long as they have capacity. Right, and which, it's your judgment as a doctor to say, is this patient safe? And that's a really hard call to make sometimes. You are telling me, you're, you're asking another human to determine whether another human is going to take their life and has an intent and a plan and everything ready to go. And that's a hard call to make. Etika has some questionable behaviors. It's hard to determine sometimes whether an individual is going to go ahead and carry that out. So as a physician, as, as blaming the system, is the system hard to see a psychiatrist? Is it hard to get help? Is it hard to see somebody? Yes. Uh, and we do have to work on that to create better social systems uh, to help people out. But it's a much more complex problem than just let's blame the doctors. Yeah. And I think... Also, we need to address the things that brought those people to suicide in the first place. Right. Like, rather than going downstream and looking at what could the hospitals and the doctors and whatnot do to fix this problem when this person is already in this mental state, we have to think about what brought this person in this mental state to begin with. Right. And I think one of the precipitating factors for, it seems like a lot of people actually, mm -hmm. is YouTube. Right. Um, YouTube and this issue with breakdowns and with... Um, you know, having suicidal thoughts. Right. There are several people who have been down this path. Mm -hmm. And I think there are several issues with YouTube. One, I think this idea of, you know, YouTube creators are on this hamster wheel mm -hmm. where basically if you're not posting consistently, they throw you to the side. And a lot of people, you know, their livelihood depends on that. That's where they make their money. Right. And to have your livelihood dictated by some algorithm that you know, might not go your way. I think that is certainly something that contributed to like his decline. And the other issue I think YouTube creators run into that negatively affects their mental health isn't necessarily on the Google or YouTube algorithm side, but on the community side. Certain YouTubers have really toxic communities and individuals that are leaving hate like over and over. I mean, there are certain people that just solely post hate to, towards different you, you see this one spam kind of like why are you hating everyone right right um and there's just a lot of negativity i think in certain youtubers comments right 100 percent. and we're really lucky over here to have you guys so some things we definitely wanted to go over in this video as well is some things to look out for because people are always saying you know if you see any suspicious activity um report it you know if you 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 yourself might be able to not identify how in trouble you are. So there's some things we wanted to go over that you can really look out for because suicide should be, suicide watch should be something that we are all involved in. It could be anybody in anyone's life. So you should be on a lookout for it at all times. Um, so some things that, so some things that really indicate you should investigate and talk to this person a little further and really tease out what's, what's going on. So if a person starts talking about how much of a burden they are, how, if they feel like trapped into a box, they have nowhere to go, everything feels hopeless, um, they start behaving differently, they start behaving erratically, recklessly, not having any care for their health, alcohol, drug abuse, um, getting involved with the wrong people, um, not communicating with those that they trust and they love and kind of pushing those people away. Um, especially, you know, feeling irritable and at the same time a really big one is if they feel a kind of guilt or humiliation about something in their life that is inescapable. And that's where I think YouTube kind of plays a role in that as well because that's something that you are a person in front of a lot of other people and your mess up is magnified to a huge extent and then you have people from all angles talking to you and I don't know in particular if that's what he was really concerned about. Um, he, again, his kind of issues were a lot more intricate than just, you know, oh, he has hate on the internet, he's this or that. Um, usually it's a lot more complex than that. 
but I think that does play a role and these are the main things you really should look out for because what doctors do is when he went to that psych ward and he was analyzed, one of the first things the doctors probably did was assess his suicide. Uh, suicidality. Yeah, suicidality, exactly. So one of the first things you do is you see if a person is thinking thoughts of suicide and that might even be normal. A lot of us might get really angry sometimes and really frustrated with life and we have that thought of maybe it would just be better if I just end it. That can be normal sometimes. That's why when a patient expresses those concerns, that's not grounds to hold and hospitalize a patient. When you do have to hospitalize a patient, even against their will, is when they have an intent to harm themselves or somebody else and have a plan to do it. If they have a plan and they can verbally tell you how they're gonna enact it, then that gives you grounds to hospitalize somebody and really investigate what's going on. So I don't believe Etika probably told his psych ward or anything like that if he had any plans and was probably let go. So at that point, it's very hard to make an intervention in this kind of volatile case. If a patient is admitted for alcohol withdrawal and we've treated them with medications and you know they're basically medically cleared to leave as long as they still express that intent with a plan to commit suicide we'll keep them in the hospital even if they're good to go and we were planning to discharge them that day and we'll usually put like a one-to-one -one sitter and wait until they don't have that um, suicidality or suicidal ID suicidal plan whatever you call it ID. Well, whatever and we'll wait until you know they're ready to go from that psychological perspective as well. So getting past all of the jargon about you know the medical, the sciences, the ethical, uh, there was Etika. And so while I haven't seen any of his recent content, and from what I do remember, it was quite uh, extreme content that he would put up with him screaming, and it would be kind of vulgar. But at the same time, he was a guy with a really good heart, and you could tell that. Yeah, from when I used to watch him, he used to have a lot of actually insightful things to say. Mm -hmm. Like he had streams where people would donate, he'd read them and he'd respond to them. And he gave really good advice to um, like the youth, right. uh, like people caring for your mother and you know, what's important and what's not. Right. It seems like he had a good head. It seems like he had a good head on his shoulders. Um, I'm just not sure when the downward spiral started, but when I used to watch him, he, yes, he was vulgar and all that. <laughs> right. And, but I, again, look past that and look to the person behind that. Like I initially read that he, there was a missing person mm -hmm. in New York and I was like, huh? And the people were saying that it might be Etika. And I learned like seven minutes after it was posted by the NYPD that he passed away. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was I was kind of groggy from waking up, and when he said that, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So, that's really unfortunate. I really, really empathize also with the people around that person. Right. Like, the family and the people that are left to deal with the stuff after suicide. Right. Like, like what are you left with? The yeah. mother now, her son died and now her other son committed suicide right um it's just a really terrible thing to do to the people around you right and i know suicide is a very selfish thing to do as well it's a, it's a way out for you um of your problems it's a perceived way out for you while it is doing a huge disservice to everybody around you that loves you yeah and i know culture is very individual focused here and it's like what is the best option for me right. but for something as big as this you really need to consider the people around you right and again i think if he seeked help we wouldn't have been in this situation because really the biggest issue he people around him his family and whatnot knew what was going on but you really can't do anything if the person themselves isn't willing to accept that help Right? He was admitted to the psych hospital, or the psych ward. Um, the, his friends tried to get him help. His family tried to get him help. It just, um, unfortunately, Etika just wasn't having it. Right, and a lot of people might ask, what can you do for these individuals? Um, there actually is stuff you can do for these individuals. Like, uh, one thought comes to mind, if you have absolute, you know, resistant depression and you have suicidal ideations, there's something called electroconvulsive therapy that can actually be quite life-saving. It's 
actually you you lay down and you get these um, electrical shocks basically to your brain that kind of give you these mini seizures and kind of restart the way your brain is is functioning and it can be highly effective in getting people back from this kind of mindset that kind of seems like what do we do about this guy how is it possible just know that there are options out there it's not like there's no help you know a lot of you guys that are out there that feel like you're stuck you're trapped and there's no other way out there is always a way out of what you're dealing with and with time, things will always get better. Um, and if things get worse, you know, there are ways to deal with it and work it out, but suicide is definitely not the answer. Yeah. That and, is one thing that is for sure. Yeah, and to add to that, what else can you do to help these people? I think a lot of people don't recognize that suicide is often accompanied by an underlying psychiatric diagnosis. So I'm not sure if Etika was formally diagnosed with anything, mm -hmm. but if he had depression or bipolar or um, whatever, if you treat that and you help those symptoms, it does also help with the suicidal thoughts. Right. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, thank you for watching. I hope we haven't really talked about suicide on this channel So I hope that this was a discussion that I hope you'll be a part of in the comments leave your thoughts down below I am looking forward to read them I'm gonna read all the comments on this video and like Herman mentioned this video is not gonna be monetized This is just somebody that I've watched in the past issues exactly and we need to be more active think right. what can I do to help right. if you see someone that's suicidal just giving them a phone number or saying I'm here to talk to you right. that could be that could go a long way right or instead of re leaving like a nasty comment on someone who might be unstable leave a nice comment like things like that do matter and if we as a group focus on this issue and making things better we can go a long way but if we just generally say you know, yeah, well, well we got to fix mental health and we don't do anything ourselves, then we're still at where we started, basically. Yeah. And with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this video. Rest in peace, Attica, and prayers out to his family, and joy con boys. All right. See you in the next video. See ya.